Did you know that if you add just one simple ingredient to homemade mayonnaise, it lasts in the refrigerator for months, which means you can grab it and use it whenever you need it. You can make it in large batches and just have it on hand. And the special ingredient actually makes your mayonnaise healthier for you. Let's check it out. I always loved the idea of making homemade mayonnaise, but I like doing things in big batches where I can make up a bunch of what I need and have it on hand for later and not have to do it every single time that I want to eat it fresh. And mayonnaise just doesn't work that way. Homemade mayonnaise, you mix it up and then it's really only good for about four, five, maybe six days. And so I just could never quite get into having homemade mayonnaise on hand all the time. It's so much healthier, it's so much better for you, but it does take an extra step before you throw together a quick lunch that uses mayonnaise. Until I learned this trick. And this trick is to ferment your mayonnaise. Yes, we're going to ferment mayonnaise, which means we're actually going to be cultivating good bacteria in our mayonnaise instead of just putting it in the refrigerator and trying to keep it raw and fresh. By fermenting your mayonnaise, you are going to get months out of the mayonnaise. That means you can make up a really big batch if you want and have it on hand. It means you can make a small batch, but your leftovers can sit in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. This is a wonderful, wonderful trick, and it's no harder than just making regular everyday mayonnaise. I love this, and ever since I discovered this, we have homemade mayonnaise now on our sandwiches, in our egg salads, potato salads, whatever it is we're doing. We now use homemade mayonnaise because of this one trick. So let's jump right in. If you guys have never made mayonnaise before, you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is. The one thing that you really wanna have on hand is an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a regular blender, you can use a food processor, you can even make it by hand, but beware, it does take a few minutes and a whole lot of whisking. First thing we need is one very, very fresh room temperature egg. Now, we are going to be consuming this raw, so do make sure that it's really fresh and from a really good source so you don't have to worry about salmonella or anything like that. This one is a very fresh egg right from the chicken coop. And I'm just gonna crack the whole thing in there. You can use two egg yolks if you prefer instead of one whole egg, but really I like to just use the whole thing so I don't have any waste. Now I want to use about a teaspoon of good quality prepared mustard. It could be a yellow mustard, it can be a whole grain mustard like this, it could be stone ground, whatever it is that you have on hand is fine. I like a lot of mustard in my mayonnaise, so I usually use a very generous teaspoon. Okay, now we're going to want about half of a teaspoon of salt. Again, make sure you're using really good quality salt. Today I'm using a Redmond Real Salt. And we're gonna want about two teaspoons of lemon juice. I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can do that. There we go. You have the option, if you want, to add some seasonings. If you wanna add some fresh herbs in there, you can do that right now. This is oregano. If you wanna add some garlic, you can do it. Chop it just a little bit so it's not too hard on your immersion blender to get it all mixed in. And you can just throw that in. Okay, now here comes the big trick. And that is we want to use something that is really probiotic, something that has a lot of live cultures in it. You can use the whey that's drained off of plain yogurt. Even store-bought yogurt is fine as long as it's a plain yogurt without a lot of additives. If you have any other ferment going in your house though, you can use the brine off of that. I am making a cranberry rhubarb chutney right now. It's a fermented chutney, so I'm just gonna use the juice for that. It's a little bit pink, it's really pretty. If you watch this long enough, you'll see that it's actually currently bubbling. Any sort of a ferment would work, any sort of a lacto-ferment, I should say, would work. Don't worry too much about the flavor it's gonna impart in your mayonnaise because it's very, very minimal. It really isn't gonna add very much in there. So if you're using sauerkraut, if you have like a beet kvass going, anything like that would be perfect. We're looking for two tablespoons of the brine. 
right on in there with the egg. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna provide the starter for that ferment so that this really kicks off fermentation in your mayonnaise. It's just like inoculating it with good bacteria. Ooh, that chutney smells so good. I wish you guys could smell that because that smells really good. Now I have my garlic in there. I am gonna go ahead and add a little bit of oregano. If you had basil on hand, you could throw that in. Fresh herbs just make it so incredibly delicious. Just toss them right on in. I have one and a quarter cups of really good quality oil. I often use olive oil because it's what I buy in bulk and I have in hand. I always have olive oil on my shelf. I get it from Azure Standard because they make sure that it is absolutely pure olive oil and not adulterated. So usually you use that, but Olive oil does impart a pretty strong flavor to your mayonnaise. It's not gonna take, taste like your best foods mayonnaise that you get from the grocery store. So if you're looking for a milder flavor, you can use another healthy oil. That would be something like an avocado oil. This today is a grapeseed oil. They're both great oils to use and they taste pretty good. We're gonna pour that right on into our mason jar that we're using here. If you're doing this in a food processor or in a blender, or even by hand, you're gonna wanna wait on the step and slowly mix in your uh, oil as you're stirring. But when we're using the immersion blender, we can just toss it all in there and let it kind of separate for just a second. Now we're gonna put the immersion blender in and I'm gonna hold it all the way to the bottom until it starts turning kind of white. And then when I see that starting to grow, that white area starting to grow, I can pick it up and move up and down with it. Look at that, you guys. Homemade mayonnaise in uh, what? If I wasn't talking, that would have taken me less than a minute to throw this all together and to make it. I don't even tend to measure most of the time when I'm making it at home. But look at how nice and thick that is. It is amazing. Oh, and it tastes so incredibly good. It's very garlicky. It's just perfect. I absolutely love it. You can taste at this place, and if you wanna adjust your seasoning at all, if you want a little more salt, or you want a little more mustard, or any of the herbs, you can adjust that right now. But here's where things get tricky. <laughs> what is the one thing you've always been told not to do with mayonnaise? To leave it out on the counter, right? So we're gonna totally throw that advice out the window because what you need to do right now is leave this mayonnaise out on the counter, covered, we wanna put a cover on, for at least six hours. A six hours, six to 10 hours is just fine to allow this to really kick off fermentation. Just room temperature is absolutely fine. And then you can put it in your refrigerator and it's ready to eat at whatever time you want. You may notice a little bit of changes in the way it looks when you leave it out after that six hours because you might see some bubbles start to form, but mayonnaise is pretty thick. So don't be worried if you don't see it. It can be very hard to see that. Here you have mayonnaise that is going to sit in your refrigerator for one month, two months. It's kind of good to go for a long time until it starts to develop any off flavors or if you get any mold on the top, you'll know that that's a sign to go ahead and toss it out and make a brand new matte batch. Wasn't that easy? If you're interested in any other great ferments that are super healthy for you, check out this video right here.